one that to miss. So I am really delighted today to be able to introduce our speaker. It's like a deja vu experience here. Reverend Ruth Kirby is the director of the Ashland Center for Spiritual Living, which is a trans transformational educational center, and it offers powerful, upbeat, transforming classes. Now, she used to be the minister of the Living Truth Center, and we met right here. I was a part of that for several years here. And so this is a deja vu experience for us to be back here at the Havaran, celebrating in just a slightly different format. Not much, though. She's been a Center for Spiritual Living minister for 10 years. Uh, she's also a, a wedding and memorial officiant, as well as a spiritual counselor and an inspirational speaker. Now, besides that, you might not know that she is also the head of the... Um, where do I have it here? can't read my writing after, after reading in the book. United Nations? <laughs> the United Nations, uh, yes. Very close to that. She's the director of the Rogue Valley Interfaith Ministries. Now, many of you have been to the Thanksgiving morning interfaith service, and Ruth is the one that hosts that and is actually, you know, heads that, not directs that. So that's a wonderful, a wonderful expression of our community because, you know, even Easter is celebrated by many different paths, not just Christian. It's really something for all of us. And the interfaith service brings all of those traditions together and shows the oneness of that. Now, she also offers um, workshops, and I know that she does this on the first Saturday of every month, and I want everyone to be aware that there is a poster on the back table, I think. Yes? Not yet, but there will be. It'll manifest as we are sitting here. Or see her, see her later to find out more about that, but uh, her next one is going to be on May 3rd, and it's titled Sailing the Relationship. And it's, it's at the Headwaters Building at 9.30 to noon on May, May 3rd, and that's a Saturday. So like I said, the first Saturday of every month she's having a class. Check it out, talk to her afterwards, and get more information on that, and hopefully she will eventually put a flyer on her bulletin board back there so you know about, about that. Reverend Ruth is going to be talking today about taking a flight. So are you ready to take off? Yes. Uh, let's give a warm welcome to Reverend Lee Kirby. Good morning. Good Easter morning. As you heard, my name is Reverend Ruth Kirby, and I will be your flight attendant this morning. I want to thank you for choosing Unity Airlines Flight 777 Bound for Glory. Uh, please take this moment to secure your seats and tray tables to the laid back position. And make sure your seat belts are unfastened. There will be no smoking during the flight, but please be aware the passengers may catch fire and burn with passion along the way. The in-flight movie will be Jesus Christ Superstar, and the meal will be a choice of either wine and bread or fasting. There are no exits, but in the unlikely event that this flight fails to reach the height necessary for glory, your seat cushions will become a pair of wings allowing you to complete your own ascension. <laughs> Once again, thank you for flying Unity Airlines. I hope you enjoy your flight. All right. Good morning again. We are taking flight. Uh, and this, this Easter time of year, the springtime, is so rich and so full of both spiritual type holidays and also I mean the flowers are out there partying and all the trees are coming alive and just so much bursting life energy going on in all the various stories and metaphors and in nature and, and um, so there's there's being asked to speak on Easter is is not about what am I going to talk about is what am I not going to talk about there's just so much to choose from so what I have chosen to talk about, though, and uh, for those recovering Catholics or whatever, hang on to your seat, I'm going to talk about Jesus. I am. I'm going to talk about Jesus. And the Jesus that I want to talk about, uh, makes sense to talk about him today, I guess, um, is the radical activist Jesus, the teacher, the way shower, the mystic, the avatar, the man who came to this world with a great message and made an attempt to share it with the people of his day. And it was a radical message. He was talking about loving everybody. It was a message of inclusivity and compassion and you know, really loving the 
uh, showing up in the face of you know the hypocrisy. He was he was very intense as a way shower. He was not uh, wambly wambly in any way. He had a huge message and people didn't like it. Not everybody, but of course a huge amount of people did, right? Now he wasn't running around saying, look at me, I'm divine and you're not, you know. So he, he himself was not teaching that message. He was teaching a message of empowerment. This I can do, you can do it more. He was showing people how we could live in such an empowered way. That was his message. And I, sometimes I feel sad that in a way his own, the Christianity, uh, often traditional Christianity robs uh, their people of the main message of their teacher, which is that, you know, he wasn't the one divine one, that we all are, that we are all divine. So his message was abs for absolutely everyone. So what he taught with his life at great risk was that we were all perfect, we were all powerful, and we were all beautiful, and we were all phenomenal, and that we could live our lives in such a way that we knew this to be true. And he took his teaching not to the uh, high up scholars, spiritual religious scholars of the day, but to the streets, to the street people, to the hookers, to the bums, to the people who were not being paid attention to, the people who were considered lowlifes. And he took his teaching to that realm and said, you guys are great. Don't forget how phenomenal you really are, right? Now, as you might imagine, this upset people in power. And, um, and I'm pretty sure, you know, Jesus knew that it was going to. Don't you think? He's smart enough to know that that was going to upset a few people to go around and tell the masses that they had power, right? Yeah. And that they were not what, the, what they were being told they were. So I, I think he pretty much knew that that was going to upset some people. So he wasn't concerned about that, was he? That, was, that didn't stop him, right? Did not stop him from doing it. So knowing that, he went full on in. So, and he was, and everything to him was a teaching moment. You know, he was such a master teacher. So when it came time that they were mad enough, that it looked like they were, you know, were mad enough to get rid of him, and his death was imminent, it was like, ah, oh, another teaching moment. Another opportunity to continue what I've been saying all along, is that we cannot die and we are not these bodies, we are not this little clod of ailments running around, you know, that we are spirit itself, eternal life. Great, bing, opportunity to teach this. So he said, you know, this is happening and uh, I'll be back, <laughs> basically. Don't worry, I'm not going to die. They can kill my body, but they're not going to kill me. And I'll, you'll, I'll, you'll see, I'll be back. In a good way, not like an Arnold Schwarzenegger sort of way, but like, <laughs> I'll be back, not I'll be back. You know what I mean. So then, so then they did. They very clearly killed him, and his body died, and his spirit did not. And those that witnessed this uh, told the story. And it was quite a story. We're still telling it. April 2014. Right? We're still telling this story. It's such a great story. What a great story. They kill, you know, this person gets killed and he shows up and says, I didn't die. And wouldn't that be great if everyone that died did that? That would be just so handy. I, I mean, it would just be so much easier if we, if everybody did that. And we just, we would just know for sure every time, right? Great, great to see you have a good journey, you know, wherever you're going. But, um, but, you know, maybe it's, not, maybe it's not that easy. I bet, you know, maybe they're trying and they can't or something. I don't know. Um, but he was able to. It reminds me of a time when I was really wanting, I was having this reoccurring dream and I really wanted to have a lucid dream. And a lucid dream is like one where you're, during the dream, you actually become conscious that you're in the dream and you start to, you know, you're like aware of yourself being in the dream and that kind of thing. And so I really wanted to do that because I wanted to change the ending of this reoccurring dream. And I worked on it, and eventually I could. I, I looked up how you would, you know, how you would try to do this, and I made the intention every night, and every night, and every night, and eventually I did. So um, I know that that just makes me think that there is a possibility of, of projecting oneself out after dying, but maybe it's something you have to prepare for or know how to do, or I don't know. Anyway, he did it, and we're glad, and it's been a great story ever since. It has inspired thousands and thousands of people. So what he taught with both his life and his death is that it's possible to live in this world 
and yet identify oneself with the indwelling presence. And not be shaken by the fleeting, changing forms. Form is always changing. So he was teaching us to, to have be rooted in our spiritual truth, in that which never changes, not the things that change all the time. And of course, Jesus is not the only mystic giving this message. Many mystics throughout the ages have shared a similar teaching. I'm sure you know of plenty of them. One that is alive today in our time is Eckhart Tolle, and I wanted to share a reading from him about true happiness and the illusion of form. So this is a reading from Eckhart Tolle. People believe themselves to be dependent on what happens for their happiness. That is to say, dependent on form. They don't realize that what happens is the most unstable thing in the universe. It changes constantly. They look upon the present moment as either marred by something that has happened and shouldn't have, or as deficient because of something that has not happened but should have. And so they miss the deeper perfection that is inherent in life itself, a perfection that is always already here, that lies beyond what is happening or not happening, beyond form. You can never make it on the level of form. You can never quite arrange and accumulate all the forms that you think you need so that you can be yourself fully. Sometimes you can do it for a brief time span. You can suddenly find everything working in your life. Your health is good, your relationship, you have money, possessions, love and respect from other people. But before long, something starts to crumble, here or there, either the finances or the relationship, your health or your work or living situation. It's the nature of the world of form that nothing stays fixed for very long. And so it starts to fall apart again and change. The voice in the head that never stops speaking because a civilization becomes, sorry, the voice in the head that never stops speaking becomes a civilization that is obsessed with form and therefore knows nothing of the most important dimension of human existence, the sacred, the stillness, the formless, the divine. Find the perfection that is deeper than any form and untouched by time. The joy of being, which is the only true happiness, cannot come to you through any form, possession, achievement, person, or event, through anything that happens. That joy cannot come to you ever. It emanates from the formless dimension within you, from consciousness itself. Can I get an amen? Amen. So this is a message from the mystics. It is the message of the Easter message, that it is coming from all, all sorts of places, too. That we are not our bodies, we are not our minds. We are consciousness that lives forever. I brought a little visual here. A little friend of mine. <coughs> Now, here's, hold on. <laughs> this is the wizard puppy puppet. <coughs> Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Did you have a good Easter so far? Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, this is just a metaphor, an image of the life force that animates us. So here, the puppet is our bodies, and my hand is the life force. I'm, I'm animating it, I'm making it happen, right? It's making all these movements and having a good time. Aww. That's after de <laughs> physical death. At some point, <laughs> the body has had enough, it's been through whatever it is, and it doesn't have what it takes anymore to connect in with that life force energy that is still going forever and forever expressing, finding something else to express through, finding another thing to animate and express through and continue to express. So the energy of that, that, that which animates us, continues on, continues on, continues on. And the body doesn't in this form. That's okay. One of the things um, that is important in terms of really grasping this Easter message is being okay with death. It's really getting a whole different idea about what death is. You know, in the natural world, all death is about life. Um, everything that dies becomes someone's dinner or 
goes into the earth again or something. It's all about, all death is, is continuing life. It's all about continuing life. It's the, the very thing that keeps it going. So it's part of the whole sacred circle of life and allowing that to be, to really understand that. So that that which is truly us, that animating spirit that is us, that jumps up and dances, is alive still when your body dies. And, and you may see your, your little body laying there and go, oh, the body's done, you know, okay, but life continues. Now, one of the things, so our challenge is to let go of that identity and form, right? To be able to shift our identity, it's like changing your address and really getting where you are really truly from. And I believe that that is, that ability for Jesus to be able to be so clear about that was what made him so radical. It's what powered him, what made him so, if, if you're uh, saying, I cannot die, think about what you might do with your life if you knew you could not die. And I believe it's that very solid knowing that he had that allowed him to love so deeply and so radical, to, to, to love people that, you know, he was going to get in trouble for loving, and to, to do, you know, what he did. He did that so, and in the face of all the hypocrisy of the time, just absolutely in the face of it, an activist, a mystic revolutionary, um, and that the reason I believe he was his so strong and so powerful and so true and unwavering, walking to where they were going to kill him for it, still there, loving everyone, because of what he knew, because he was rooted in that truth, in the spiritual truth. Can we be that bold? Can we be that bold? Can we be that sure? Can we root ourselves in the formless, infinite life, the life force energy within us, and use the power of the universe to propel our ministry, to propel us in what we know we're here to do and say and be, and who we're here to love, and to be our unique selves, and to create this phenomenal world of love and caring? Can we be that bold? I say we can. And uh, mid-talk, right in the middle of the flight, I am inviting uh, David to come back up and help bring us into that bold knowing uh, of who and what we are. So let's welcome David back up here. We want to spend some time with him, get in touch with our true, phenomenal selves, right? Yo? Yo, that's right. Yo, in a powerful way. So we're we're going to be powerful up in here. So I just have this feeling that, you know, if, uh, if I know it's all good, yo, because everything is moving in the God's law. Yes, I know it's all good, yo, because everything up in here is good. Help is here. There's no need to fear. Angels is conspiring to bring you good cheer. They got your back. They keep your mind on track. They help your negativity, and that's the fact. Let it go. Let it go.
Jesus rap. <laughs> Only in Unity and Ashland, right? <laughs> Thank you, David. Let's give him some more love. <laughs> so that was your powerful, deep meditation time. <laughs> to really get in touch with who and what you are. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Oh, yes, when we learn to rely on the power within us, what will we do? The, the world needs your magnificence. Can you tell? Can you tell that the world might just need a little help right now? I don't know if you noticed. It is so ready for us to spread our wings, to stand in our truth, to give our all to what we know is right and true in the name of love, in the name of love. Our love for all, not just for some, you know, not just to build up our own little stash for the whatever's going to happen, but to come together and build together, build something amazing together, build a community based on kindness, and love and inclusivity and compassion. And do this while being powered by spirit, by the infinite love, the infinite energy. We don't have to worry about getting burnt out. We tap in to the infinite river. We tap into the infinite river of spirit, of power, of peace and presence. And this is a group scenario, right? A group project. And when you work together with people, we're supporting each other. We're experiencing that, that yummy social thing that happens as well when we get together and do things together and create a world together that is for everyone, absolutely everyone. There is nobody at all on the outside of Jesus' love. And there doesn't need to be an outside of ours either. We have that infinite love within each one of us. And we have the capability to shine that out, to let that shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. With great boldness and power and strength. And, and knowing that you cannot die. That's, you know, and you're gonna. <laughs> both. I mean, it's interesting how those both go together. I mean, the puppet's gonna go at some point, right? Your body, at some point, will be done with whatever it's here to do. And we have no idea when that will be. Tomorrow, 100 years from now, I don't know. So, but your life will continue on. The life goes on, right? And when you look at the natural world, boy, life wants to live. Life wants to live so bad it comes up through concrete. Little blades of grass push, push up through concrete. Uh, a little bush makes 5,000 seeds to make sure there's another one, at least one other one, right? Propagation is, is unbelievable abundance. Life is seriously intent on living. You can see that all around us. And it's wonderful to be in the springtime when it's all bursting forth. And, and we get to and, and imagine, you know, that it's been sitting dormant all this time and suddenly, wham, you know, here it is again. So we, do we, I don't know if we, anybody has a dormancy to come out of at this point, but you can use this moment in time. This is a high level, all kinds of line up here, to use this moment to come out of dormancy and bloom. Bloom with your power and your beauty and your incredibleness and everything that you have to offer the world is just waiting for you to offer it. Whatever it is you feel so drawn to doing, the world needs you now. Yeah, it needs all of us in our magnificence, in our power, boldly. It's like the Star Trek Jesus. He boldly loved where no one had loved before. <laughs> so whatever your imagery is, make the change. See what you can do to transform that. When we learn to rely on the power within us, we are lifted up out of worry and concern over forms. It's like taking flight after a lifetime of crawling on the earth. I don't know if you've noticed my little altar here with the butterfly. There's a caterpillar here. So after a lifetime of crawling on the earth, imagine having wings. A whole new way of living. Imagine being the freedom of being above it all and seeing the big picture and being at peace. 
knowing that we have the power to be the answer to whatever question the world has. We have the power to be the answer. And it's that big of a difference. When you, when you root yourself in spirit compared to crawling on the ground for the caterpillar, it's like growing wings. You are lifted up. We are lifted up with such an exquisite feeling of lightness. Wings spread wide and trusting the wind. I was thinking today about, uh, or not today, this week, about the butterfly and the butterflies take off, you know? <laughs> and how much effort we have put into getting a plane off the ground. But the butterfly just kind of goes, and the wind just goes, right? So for the butterfly, it's not this big effort, right? The big thing is trust. The butterfly takeoff is that trust in the wind beneath its wings. That ability to let go, right? To let, it's got its little tiny little legs attached to something and it lets go and soars. And that's what we need to do. We need that big trust, not the big effort, but the big trust. We've been given a great gift, this life powered by spirit. Do you have any idea how phenomenal it is to be given this life powered by spirit? It's time to open that gift and really live it and shed our attachment with forms. They're here, and then they're not, and then they're here, and then they're not, and then they're here, and then they're not. So we need to let go of some of that attachment. We're not here to be be form, we're here to live, right? To live life. And when the world, the world changes when we change. When we finally tire of crawling on the ground, we will do the most radical, unexpected thing ever. We will spread our wings and fly, and fly above all of our limitations, and create a phenomenal world of love and peace. Are you with me here? Yeah. Yeah. Let's take off. And so it is. And as Richard Mosey's over to the piano, we're going to take this into prayer. So go ahead and close your eyes and feel your wings itching on your back there, ready to spread. And we just take a moment to know the truth of our being. And this is what I know. I know that there is only one power, one presence, one divine intelligence, one life force energy, one song, universe. Only one thing going on here. And it is the power and the presence of pure spirit. And so I know that this is exactly who I am, that I'm an expression of this divine intelligence. And I know it is true for everyone here, that we are all expressions of divine intelligence. And that this is all that there is. There's nothing outside of it, so there's nothing else we could possibly be. We are expressions of God. We are expressions of this intelligent life force energy that wants to live. It is living through us, as us, here, now, and forever. And it is the truth for all beings on this planet that we are all expressing this truth in our own unique way. <clears throat> and so I know that we have everything we need already within us to express a life of joy, of peace, of abundance and power, of community, of kindness, of love for all. That we are hardwired for this. We are already in the We Are One plan. We already know how to do this, and as we let go of everything we thought we learned about form and illusion and separateness, we come into this oneness, this beautiful, beautiful garden where we are all blooming, that each unique flower is valuable, and none is more valuable than the other, and together we are exquisite. And so I know we all have everything we need within us to bloom this spring, to bloom this Easter, to rise this Easter to the occasion, to be our powerful selves and go forward with creating this incredible world that we know we could be living in, that is already here for us. And we get bold, and we get brave easily because we are empowered by the highest power there ever could possibly be, spirit itself. Can we give thanks?
thanks for this, because it's certainly a gift. Oh, my goodness. Oh, your goodness. We have so much goodness. And so in great gratitude, I simply let it be, for I know that it is unfolding perfectly as we all bloom forward into this day and into this week and into this year and into our lives that are all about love, that bold, intense love that we came here to give and get and spread around. And in great gratitude, I simply let it be. And so it is. So it is. So it is.